Wakey, wakey. Your school days. Morning, Carisha. Morning, miss. Love them. <gasps> I got it right on the calculator. I know how to do fractions now. All loathe them. Oh. Hello, intervention room. Place of pain. It's not fair. You never forget them. <laughs> Dominic, perhaps you'd like to tell me what you're doing with that chair. At this big city school in East London, things are changing. Rivaldo, lesson. Morning. There's a new head teacher. In silence, please, your turn. With a plan to inspire the kids of the capital. We've got 900 pupils, bags and bags of potential, but not a lot of self belief. Sir, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Right, come on, let's do today. Every child in this school deserves to succeed. Are you excited? Yeah. And our job is to make sure we get it right for every single one of them. But when you're dealing with teenagers... Whoa, 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 whoa. Life's never straightforward. Come on, sweetie, don't cry. And I want to know what it is that's troubling you so much. We filmed over the year to find out what life is really like in our secondary schools. If we can't get to a point where you can understand why your behaviour was wrong, I'll have to exclude you. For the teachers... Guys, guys, in all seriousness, I am having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I love you, miss. <laughs> and the kids. Can I bring a pillow into the exam? No. At the very start of adult life. It's banter. I know it's only banter. This is the time for work car. Hello. Morning. Good morning, how are you? A little bit behind. Can never have enough to do. But it's all fine. Being a head teacher can keep you awake at night quite a lot. You constantly asking yourself the question of, am I doing the right thing? Because you do have 900 kids in your care and you feel responsible for every single person. OK, so anything I can do... Other no, than... Just keep me sane. Don't go mad. If you feel you're going mad, OK, I'll be on my radio in the GCSE hall. Let me know. <laughs> All right, please. We need you as our leader. Right, I'll <laughs> see you shortly in the meeting room. OK. OK, bye. <laughs> Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Have you had a good holiday? Did you miss us? No. Mm. Yes, I don't For so many of our kids, this is their sanctuary and their security and their stability that a lot of time they often don't have at home. Thank you. Just being a teenager can be awful, let alone when your parents break up or you split up with your girlfriend or whatever else happens. And that's why the relationships and the support that we offer are hugely, hugely important. It's the first day of a new half term. Come take a seat. And year 10s are in English with Mr Bisfam. First question. Do you believe in the possibility of love at first sight? I just want you to think about this for a second. Jeb, I knew your hand would go straight up. Start us off, please. You might see someone and like them, yeah, but you don't know how their what their personality is or anything. Okay. They could be a white bee, but just look nice. It could be a right bee. Yeah, bitch. Oh right. Thanks, Jeb. Fifteen-year-old Jeb has been at Frederick Bremer for just a year. I got chucked out of my last school because of bad behaviour. Um, I was getting in arguments with teachers a lot. OK, you have to write an explanation. So this is an example of what I would write. I don't remember a time when I didn't know Jeb. Because I think he's always been on my radar. So it's got the idea of confusion and the idea of being difficult. Bear with me a second, Jeb. Let me just finish and I'll come to you. Jeb came to us in Year 9 with a patchy track record. And we've worked very, very hard on engaging him in school and working with his strengths. And when he's on form, He's fabulous. Give my heart love to him now. For I swear it's like, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. So I've got a bunch of little Romeos in here, Samira. I'm interested in like all the Shakespeare plays and that. My favourite story is Romeo and Juliet. 
in the modern version of Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio, it's not really a long time ago, is it? No, but it's set. It's still the language is all set in Shakespeare's time. They didn't change the language, did they? Gently. <laughs> Jen, I'm not going to pass it back to you again. I okay. just put it nicely, sir. That was not nice. That was. <laughs> I just like the essence. There's romance. There's jealousy. There's like different stuff in it. Falling love. Do you believe in love? Yeah, I do. Why might we be interested, considering we're, our control assessment is going to be on the relationship between parents and children, why might we be particularly interested in Capulet's reaction here? You just want the ball jab, don't you? It could start arguments between their parents. OK, it could start arguments between their parents, possibly. My parents split up Christmas. I think it was around Christmas Day or after that. And... I found it hard to deal with it inside, or I didn't show it a lot, but I did find it really hard. He's always struggled with anger and struggled with his emotions, and this has been a catalyst for accelerating those negative emotions at the moment. OK, come in and have a seat, Mr Jebster. It's mid-morning. Jeb's been called to see Miss Smith. He's been in trouble in his technology lesson. So, according to the statement I have, during your lesson, you sprayed links around the classroom, despite being asked not to. You were verbally abusive to staff. When Miss Sayer came along, you told her to piss off. But I didn't tell Miss Sayer to piss off. I told her. OK, she may have just thought it was meant at her. Because she was speaking to me at the time. You called Mr Bell a bellend and a pervert? Yeah. I sprayed links on myself. Fair enough, I shouldn't have been spraying it, but I did, yeah. And then I was like, Mr Bell, Mr Bellend, what I've done is wrong, I know it was. But obviously the mood I was in at the time. I do get angry quite quick, yeah. One minute I could just be normal and someone could either say something or do something and then I'd just... Next thing, I, you know, I'd just be angry. <laughs> what are we going to do about all of this? Well, I need to apologise to all three of them. And when are you going to do that? When I get time. At lunch, I think. As much as we really care about you, Jet, but we really like you, it's going to come a point where we're going to say we can't take this anymore. Uh and I'm giving you a lot of slack at the moment that I probably wouldn't be giving to other people. Mm. Family breakups of whatever form are very, very, very common. And it is one of the hardest things for a school to deal with when you've got two parents who care desperately about their children but for whatever reason have got massive issues with each other and the school are in the middle of it. Jeb is one of three siblings at Frederick Bremer. Shana, you need a brush. I know, I couldn't find one this morning, so I just put my hair up. He has two sisters, Summer in year nine. Stop moving. Sorry. Sorry. And Shana in year seven. Hey, so my mum's tonight. Summer has recently moved out of the family home to live with Dad. Are you all right? Yeah. You sure? I like making sure they're right. Like, I like being motherly to them and making sure that they've got everything they need. Huh? I do miss them. I'm scared. Best I'm best scared. Best 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 best. Oh, let's have a word. They are a tight-knit family, and often when tight-knit families fall apart, they do it spectacularly. Because it's not just about mum and dad, it's the impact it's had on all the siblings. Like Jeb, Summer has recently been in trouble with her teachers. Is Miss going to come down? Yeah, but I'm not talking to her. That'd be the best thing is don't say nothing. Just let Miss say what she's got to say, yeah? Following an argument with her drama teacher, she's been sent to see Hazel, a non-teaching member of staff who deals with student behaviour. All right, Miss. Hi. Um, I just want to know what you're doing. Like, I swore the first time and you said stop. I know and you know that you swore at least three times. 
I saw once when you told me to stop. Until you're going to have to learn to apologise to me. Apologise for what? Like apologise for what? I'm talking like this because you're sending me out amongst everyone else. So I'm not nice. going to have you back in my lesson until you are willing to... I don't to care. You just put me in a bad mood for no reason. I'm fed up with your stuff all the time. It's always me. It's always me. Listen, I, I, we're not going to talk about it now because I really have to... Then so why are you still talking to, to, to go and sort out? Then why are you still talking about it? If I'm upset about something, I'll take it out by shouting at someone, but... When it comes to talking out for I'm not... I don't say how I really do feel, if you know what I mean. To come to party. Everything's going wrong. Yeah, mm. yeah. School used to be like I could get away from everything that was going on if there was a problem at home. Yeah, you felt if you came just, here it, was, it weren't too bad. Yeah. I just feel like I need a fresh start, to be honest. It feels like everyone's watching you. Like everyone just knows how you feel, but obviously they don't. It just feels like someone's just opened me up and, like, just told everyone about, um, me. Moving house, miss. I'm just going to go somewhere fine and move school from there. You know, nine times out of ten, schools are near enough the same sweetie, didn't you? I think she puts on a front, Summer, and that's how she copes. She thinks it's a new beginning. But it's like I said to her, whether she wants to go to a new school, her mum and dad have still split up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You sure? Good girl. You know where I am. Thanks. See you later, see you. As sympathetic as we are to pupils and as supportive as we are, when they're going through bad times in their life, they have got to respect the rules in school and they've got to respect the people in the school. Yesterday made a very clear character assessment. Call me a bell end and a, and a pervert. I, I, I'll secure an apology for the second bit and for the first bit. I've got to say, at least he was using his brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're Tibble and he's Lord Capulet. Right. It's four days into term. <laughs> and Jeb is in English with Mr. Bisfan. Right, Jeb. Your oh, mortal enemy is this just. This is Ed Montague, our foe, a villain that is ever coming spite to scorn at our son. <laughs> <laughs> solemnity, solemnity. Solemnity. Since his parents separated at Christmas, staff have become concerned about his behaviour in school. There's a lot going on at home with Jeb. He really, you know, has a lot of issues to deal with. As a teacher, I think it's sometimes more consistent to try and leave that at the door and forget about it. We started off by looking at these quotes about Romeo from his dad. You listen, Jeb? Yes. My belief is you've got to be that level of consistency. If things aren't consistent in the rest of their life, you have to be like, OK, you've still got to follow the rules, Jeb. Don't you dare. Oh, what are you doing? It was evil. It was him. You could have caused it. Oh. Guys, 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 guys. He was leaning back and I pushed it down. He pulled the chair. I didn't see what happened. Pushed it down. Oh, no, no, Jeb, 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 Alright, Josh. Yes. Josh, yeah? make sure you're not leaning back on your no. chair, first of all. Yeah. Good boy. Jeb. <laughs> Jeb, you know? Jeb, you're going to listen to me or you're going to have to leave the room? Jeb, you're going to listen to me or you're going to have to leave the room? 
Okay, Jeb. You now have to leave the room. Jeb? Jeb. You now have to leave the room. This is just pathetic. It's Why not pathetic, Jeb. Jeb, I just want to speak to you. Jeb, don't speak to him. Come on. Am I? There's nothing you can do as a teacher in that situation. You feel powerless. Come on, Jeb. It's a stubborn streak that, like, I've never seen before. Come on. I want to speak to you. Jeb, you've got to speak to me. You're stopping me from learning. No, I'm not stopping you from learning, you Jeb. I'm trying to have a conversation with you. You're not. As soon as you do something like that... I want to do the work. You're stopping me from learning. Right. Jeb. I can't explain what anger feels like. It just makes me feel really mad. I've got lessons about you. Uh, you're stopping me from learning. No one asked you, so I can't talk to you. I do want to stop myself when like, I'm angry, but I just sometimes it's just too much. Jeb, this this only works. Jeb, please don't do that. Shouting at Jeb will just exacerbate the situation. All it will do is make him more and more angry. You know, you have to try and calm the situation as much as you can. Jeb, please don't do that. I'm not hurting no one. You are. Who am I hurting? Yourself. It's 11 a.m. You can stay with me then until we can go back there. Is that all right? It's better to sit in the intervention. Right. Jeb has been sent to see pastoral worker Hazel to cool off after his outburst. Yeah, but there's sometimes in life that we just have to get on with it because we're at school, we're at work. Can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I like to get through to all of them. I like to feel that they can all talk to me in some way or another and trust me. I know it's hard. When I was at school, I found it really difficult too. So I know how that feels. I wasn't a good girl at school. I was very naughty, actually. You really, really have got to rein it in. I'm trying. I know, but I've been there, done that, wore the T-shirt. Should we go and sit in here for a little while? How were you naughty? Excluded. Gone. <laughs> to another school. <laughs> yes. But what I'm worried about is this, this anger thing, right, is if it takes you out of here and takes you to a place where... I don't know. I don't know. Being excluded, it's not the right route. But when you're a student, you don't think about what you're doing. You just think, this is the way I'm going to go. I know stuff's going on, but I don't want it to be sort of like that it upsets your schooling. She's doing so well, Jeb. I think because Hazel's not a teacher, like, she sees it more. She just, like, listens to you. I'm just putting them in order, Miss. All right, well done. OCD, a bit like me. And she just tells me, like, what the right thing to do is. Do you want to put them in there, Jeb? We've got to go on call. I said, I'm going to leave the library in a mess. We'll get into trouble. You got me radio, babe? No. Huh? You have, you little tyke. <laughs> 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 Hello, Jeb. Shirts. Come on, Isaac. Come on, no, Leon, Leon, Leon. Let's go. It's break time. Miss Smith and Deputy Head Miss Hillman are on duty. Someone needs to have a conversation with someone about that piercing. 
but I know if I have it, she's going to explode. She's got a bar across her ear. I should do it. Would you like to? Okay, had about eight bits of metal in this morning. Yeah, there's um, quite a lot of piercing gone on over the holidays. Okay, thanks. <laughs> So, what are we going to do? It's not coming out. You can exclude me, put me in intervention, do what you want. No, I don't want to do that. It's my decision and it was my answer. Who, who did you go with, Mum or Dad? My dad. I don't live with my I appreciate it's rubbish at the moment and there's lots of stuff going on. I appreciate all of that. I don't want to cause you more distress by... The school's already gave me distress. Miss Smith stands in the corridor and goes, are you OK, Summer? Like, I've got something wrong with me. I don't want to ask him that every day. Okay. I don't want people saying to me, I understand how it is when they clearly don't. OK. I mean, ultimately, it's only because people care about you. Talking to a person is not going to help me. And I've tried to say to them so many times and they keep going on and on and on about it. I don't really need to talk to anyone. The only reason I'm speaking to you at all is because of this. I wouldn't be having a conversation with you or giving you any of my attention if it wasn't for that piercing. And I don't want this to be like this, but I, I can see it's going to go that way, isn't it? It's, it's already happened with the school. I don't like the school. I don't know anyone in the school. So it doesn't make a difference. It makes me sad. A lot of support has been offered to Summer, who quite clearly struggling with everything that's going on. The support's always going to be there. At some point, she will actually find something that she'll find helpful and will work for her. But at the moment, she's not going to take it. If, by any miraculous chance, you suddenly soften and change your mind... Yes, that's not going to happen. ..but do let me know, cos it will save me a job bringing your dad. She came back to life, back to reality. <laughs> So be wise and keep on reading the signs of my body. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. Right, you sit on that table there, you sit on that one there. Ah! Jeb has been sent to the intervention room as punishment for his behaviour yesterday. Take a seat there, Jeb, just at the end table there. I need to go strong because I've got a trip after school. There's Miss. Miss, I don't know what's going on. What? With Jeb. Jeb's supposed to be in here. OK. But he... No, no, you, you yeah. are. Really? Yeah. What's this? What's this? Oh, I'm going out. Jeb, come here. Jeb, come here. Jeb, come here, please. We need to talk. We need to talk. Well, we need to talk this through. You storming around the school, you being rude to me. For me for okay, listen. Patrick, because I've got a trip listen. today. After listen. 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 So yes. Take a breath. No. This is not going to go anywhere apart from you digging yourself further and further into a hole. Well, okay. I guess that's what it looked like. As I said to you that's yesterday, right. I'm always going to listen to you. you always. To me, miss. Yeah, but Jeb, I'm a little bit busy this morning. You haven't. You put me in intervention. I haven't. Well, WTF? Yeah, until yeah. I get a chance to talk to you. Because I've got to deal with a few other really Don't urgent things so. at the moment. Jeb, come here. Jeb, come here. Jeb, come here. Jeb's behaviour has started to get significantly worse in the school. It's deteriorated quite rapidly. He's going home. So it go from a minor thing like being asked to pick something up off the floor that he dropped to a full-on... The teacher's the one of the problem. Who does he think he is to ask me to do this? Have you seen Jeb anywhere? And it will escalate from A to Z without passing any other letters. Come on, Jeb. You're going to have to. OK, you think it's Jeb. If you can't, I'm going to end up excluding you, and I don't want to do that. I went... Oh, well, I don't you understand it. You don't understand I do. You don't. Why are you even a head teacher? You don't help no one. You know that's not true, Jeb. No. I don't. There is an element where he feels that he is victimised. And he can't step back and actually see what's happening in that situation. I wouldn't normally let someone go out on a trip when I can't trust their behaviour in school, let alone outside school. You are out of our control, Jeb. You just should. can't handle it. But we shouldn't have to handle it. You should, because you're a school. OK, Jeb, just pull your head up a bit, please, and take a breath. Go away. 
We can sort your trip out another point. Go away. You're making this even worse Shut for yourself, OK? I don't care. OK. I'm not going to have any choice, Jeb. Don't have any to choice. But to exclude you now. Exclude me. OK? Exclude me. Sometimes when you are supportive, those boundaries get pushed and they get pushed and they get pushed. But Jeb's behaviour cannot be unchallenged and it has to be dealt with and it can't be seen that he has more tolerance and more leeway than any other child in this school. You know, if he can't manage his anger, then he can't be here. Morning. Here she comes, walking down the street, in a bit of bit of sunshine, with everyone she meets. Morning. She's gone. It's Wednesday. Jeb is back in school after serving a three-day exclusion for his defiant behaviour. Bye. Love you. Bye. One of the reasons for fixed-term exclusions is when pupils need a cooling-off period and when they come back, they should be able to then think about what's going to be different in the future and be able to express how their actions will change as a result. Yeah. Right. Okay, I really appreciate you apologising. Yeah? I really want you to stay here. I really, really do. But we can't have any more of that, those meltdowns, yeah? Good, because I want to see you back in here. I want to see you smiling again. And I want that old Jeb back. Yeah? All right, good to see you. It might look like I don't like her, but she's all right. She's all right? Yeah, she's all right. What's all right about her? <laughs> I don't know, she's just all right. I'm not going to waste it. Can I use a bit, please? Yeah. I've got a bit of hair coming out. Can you spray my donut, please? Yeah. <laughs> Is that enough? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> to the back as well. <laughs> Safe. Yeah, that's, 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 that's £2.95, I'll buy you one. This, this OK, well, you got a rip-off, cos uh, it's in Morrison's, <laughs> mate. What type of play is it? It's a love and tragedy. OK, so that... Wait, what is it? Tragedy? Tragedy? Ah, oh, tragedy. Tra oh, so what is it, man? It's tragedy. Tragedy. <laughs> Tragedy. That's what I said. Tragedy. No, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's period five, and Jeb is back in English with Mr. Bisfan. Tragedy. Yes. I said that. It's a tragedy. Yes. Miss Smith has come to check on him and see how he's doing. Hello, Miss. Hello, sir. Jeb, yeah, you're getting into this, aren't we, on double entendres in Shakespeare? Come on. Um, I'll keep your stuff, Jeb. Thanks. How's today been? You all right? Yeah. I, I Can I just sort your tie out? It's just like... Oh, I've got peanutted. You got peanutted? Who, who was horrible enough to peanut you? Um, prefect. The prefect did that to you? Yeah. That's not an awful thing to do. Do you want me to sort them out? No. You haven't got long left of your school day. You've done really well so far. Yeah? Let's get you back in your English lesson. Don't get too used to this. You're not going to be getting this every day. There are ways we can help people going through these kind of difficulties if the obvious means of support are not helping. Summer, next week I'm running a slam poetry workshop and your name's been put forward. By who? Name forward. By me. One of the 15 kids that could do it. Some of the strategies are by stealth. Engaging in the sporting activities, engaging in drama, engaging in music. You know, people have got different ways of dealing with stressful situations. But if you're getting in trouble or anything, I'm going to really struggle to get you on there. And we will keep trying different things without it but explicitly looking like we're trying to talk about your problems. Oh, I found one. Dot. <laughs> nice. 
but yeah. Oh, Jed, stop! Older than me, and I even—is it on there? Yeah, bleeding is as well. Look at you. How it's difficult for you guys, isn't it? But you, you know, Jeb, you're not the first person it's happened to when their mum and dad's are not together, and you won't be the last, are you? Yeah, I know, it's fucked. But it's horrible when it's your exactly. own. Exactly. I know, I know. And they've been together since I've been alive, so that's even worse. Yeah. For 20 years they've been together. 20 years? Exactly. <gasps> A long time, isn't it? Yeah. It is so difficult, babe. Is that a Who's that? My son, babe. Why have you got a tattoo of him? Because he's not with me anymore, Jib. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Right, Jib. He was playing a game with all his mates. Thought he'd be silly and jumped off of a balcony. He broke his neck. Mm, sorry. <sighs> mm. Hmm. Hustle. <gasps> Is that on there? Yes! And he was only 19. So, like, not seeing him have kids grow up, it's really tough. Immediate. Oh, yes, you style. Because of losing my son, I suppose that's why I like to think that they're like one of mine, so I'm pretty loud. I, and I'll tell him how it is. Oops. Oh, you're good at this, Jeb. Am I? Mm. It just comes. Top. I think with, with Jeb, he's on a self-destruct. I look at him and I think, don't follow that path, do this path. And then I wish I could have said to my Lee, don't do that, do this. But I couldn't. Good thank day, you darling. So much, no, thank you for being you. All right. Go on, go and take a statement. Who feels comfortable writing? It's Tuesday. Summer has been chosen to take part in a poetry workshop with Mr. Bisfam and a guest poet. I'm not talking about spelling or grammar or anything like that. Just getting your ideas down on the page. And I'll help you do it, don't worry. So, see the tower block? There's loads of windows, yeah? Put your hand up if you can see anyone looking out the window. Nice one. I love writing things. It sort of puts all your feelings down onto one page without you having to tell someone. But I would say, if I was writing about a girl, I would say, like, when she's not at home, she's a bubbly, loud, yeah. but we all know inside she's hiding this and that. Sometimes I should just go and write it down instead of um, going to shout at someone or say this and that, because I don't always mean what I say when I'm angry. Um, can I just say something, yeah? Um, it's like, it's not about me, if you know what I mean, but it's saying, it's saying me in it. My hopes are high, higher than a skyscraper, but now they've dropped to my feet, each tear shed engraved in my cheek. The sore scars remain for days whilst crying for many different ways. Closed eyes, beating heart, soon it's key to stop. What would a stop mean? It's stop the last sign on your body that shuts down before it takes you over. Who am I? Is this me? When mum and dad that split up, I was so afraid of everyone knowing. And then everyone knew, and it was sort of like, whoa. That's amazing. What's your name? Summer. Summer. Got it. S uh, Summer. Like S U M M E R. Got it. Amazing. I sort of realised, why am I getting upset over this? It doesn't matter if people know. Do you want to read it? Writing a poem like that for Summer was a huge deal because she's not somebody who would easily articulate her feelings in any way. It doesn't, when you read it to yourself, it doesn't sound as, as good. Yeah, because I have to say it in a bit, like each bit and stuff. Where she was before to how she was when she came out of that poetry workshop, you could see like a weight had lifted. That is fantastic. Thanks. That is absolutely fantastic. It's really, even just reading it is quite moving. Yeah. That's really good. 
Yeah, you should be really proud of that. Well done. That's awesome. you'd like to tell me what you're doing with that chair get off the chair and put it back in the school please okay but I'm not going to give you your skateboard back it's that simple be very grateful if you could put the chair back no no don't be an accessory Harriet It's Friday. Hello, come in, come in, come in. Matt. Joshua. Jeb. Jeb has been absent all week. Is Jeb in today? Miss Smith is working with his mum to try and get him back into school. I know. But there's, like I said, there's only so much you can do. You physically can't bring him into school. You know, we can't go around and take him out of the house and make him come here. If he's refusing to come into school, there's only so long we can we can allow the situation to continue. We will try absolutely everything to engage kids into school, but there are times when the other stuff becomes more than they can bear. After a total of 10 days unauthorised absence... Right, come in and take a seat. Jeb has returned to school. Right, how are you? You sure? Yeah. It's really nice to have you back. I'm really pleased. Okay, I know things have been really difficult for you. Okay, but you know I'm not allowed to let you just stay at home. Mm. Well, I'm really pleased you're here. Okay, I want to see you keeping smiling, enjoying being back in school. It's going to be alright. You sure? Yeah. Okay. It's 10 a.m., the second period of the day, and Miss Smith has been called to deal with a student teacher dispute. Jeb having a meltdown in science. Jeb's misbehaved. Derek's asked him to leave the room, and he's adamant he won't leave. Jeb has refused to leave the classroom for two separate teachers. So Hazel and Miss Smith have been called to intervene. He's not going to come back out now. No. Has Jenny gone in? Yeah, yeah Jenny's in there. Uh... Jeb, I need to talk to you outside. I'm not coming. I'm not having this conversation. I'm not talking about the school. I don't care. I need you to make the right decision and you need to come out with me. I'm not coming out Because <laughs> I'm not scared of being chucked out or a kid or anything. Okay. Don't give a crap. This is just leave me alone. This is something. Leave me alone. This is something. Leave me to... alone, Jeb. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk. Just leave I me alone. I know, but we can't just solve this alone. in this moment. Right, well, don't. I'm not coming out. It's you too need bad. to step out. You can't make me. No, I know no, I can't no, make no, you. No one can force me to. I know I can't make you. Which is why I want you to do it. Okay, Jeb. That's why I want you to come out. Because the consequences of you refusing to do that are so serious, I don't want to have to go there. Right. One of them needs to come to school and collect him. He's not in a state to be here. I'm really worried that he's going to kick off now. Jeb stays in class until the end of the lesson. Whilst Miss Smith contacts his parents, Jeb is sent to the intervention room with Hazel. The amount of time you spend just on one student when there's all these students that need you, you can't keep on on one student forever. You'd like to. 
Like, you can't. We're at the point where I have to prioritise the majority in the school over one individual. If I cannot get through to Jeb, you know, enough is enough. He can't stay in the school. It's Monday. Jeb has not turned up to school since he refused to leave his science lesson six days ago. We have done everything we can to keep him here and support him here. But I have had to make the decision that Jeb's not going to be able to come back to the school. Miss Smith has recommended that Jeb should go to a pupil referral unit and we'll be informing him and his father later today. Jeb is coming into school today, being brought by his father. When you're the person who's making the ultimate decision, you're the one that carries the weight of that decision. I'm the one that has to live with it. Do you want to come up? Come in and have a seat. We completely understand how difficult things have been for the whole family. And we have gone out of our way right. to right. really, right. really support. Yeah. Um, it's been very, very difficult with Jeb to the point where he's been refusing yeah. to come into school. Um, when he has been in school, his behaviour is very difficult for us to manage. So when he was in last week, his behaviour in this first lesson was really poor to the point where he wouldn't leave the classroom. One of my many concerns is when Jeb doesn't want to do something, he will not do it. He will not change his mind for anybody to the point where he's been completely out of our care and control. I hate doing it. I failed. Failed. I can't. There's nothing else we as a school can do. He needs more intensive and more specialist support than we can offer. Now, I actually think him going to the, the people for our unit, being able to access all the therapeutic support and time is probably what's best for him now because it will help him get the kind of support that he requires. You constantly think you could have done something differently, could have handled it differently. But understanding the whole context of what was happening with Jeb, he needed some respite from mainstream school because he wasn't, he wasn't coping. Let's have a look at the top columns. It says descriptive writing, extended writing, and source work. So, should I aim for level five or six? Okay. Six, summer. Okay, because I think you can push yourself on this. It's the end of the spring term, and Summer has chosen which subjects she'll be taking for GCSEs next year. I'm hopeful for Summer as she moves into year 10. She's certainly much calmer, much more reasonable, and got back to that really lovely young person that she can be. So can you say, like, in my opinion? Yes, like it that? is your opinion. OK, all right, good. So I'm just checking. Okay. There's a point where I hated school. Like, I hated everyone in it. All, I just felt like all the teachers were just picking on me. I was going to leave. Now, thinking about it, it's just silly. Do you want to stay? Yeah. Have a nice Easter summer. Yeah, we'll miss you. Like miss. Have, a nice, Have a nice time in, in Spain. Spain. Oh, I yeah. will do. No one's thinking of you, just yeah, remember yeah, that. Whatever. <laughs> Make sure you come back after the two weeks' holidays. I oh, will, I promise. I love you loads. <laughs> Go on, bye.
I've missed you, you know that. I don't think he should have stayed at the school, to be honest with you. I think he needed to go and get help to make him realise that the world's not a bad place, it will get better, and he will go a long way. I miss him. Hello, stranger. Hello, Michelle. How are you? Did you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm all right. College is really good. I enjoy it a lot more than school. And now my behaviour's improved a lot. And I do sort of have a different outlook to life. You'll be fine. What I want you to do is just stay in touch with us, yeah? Because I want to know how you're doing. I didn't like that she did chuck me out. But I'm glad she did. I think how everything's turned out, I like it. I, I wouldn't change it for anything. Hi, right, sir. How are you? Did you? I'm missing you from English. Yeah, I've, had no, sir. I, I've had no one to play Lord Capula. <laughs> <laughs> Who's finished question one? Next time. School. It's like really big and scary. It's like a prison for kids. Three very different boys. What's happening, Louis? Struggling with school. My brain's going, you're going to have a panic attack. You're going to have a panic attack. I need to leave the class. Turn it off and get in. <laughs> and the battle to get them back into class. This five-minute blip is taking over. Don't let it do that to you. I have every faith in you that you can do this. Find out what students from our previous educating schools wish they'd done differently. Educating what I wish I'd known. Available now on 4OD. Exciting times here on Channel 4 tomorrow night. The toughest TV critics are back. Gogglebox is at nine o'clock. Next tonight, saving a restaurant. Or is it just a tip? Gordon's on a mission in Fuengarola.